Uh, we're going to talk more about what's taking place here in Cleveland. Radio talk show host Charlie Sykes of WTMJ Radio in Milwaukee is on set with me. He's also an MSNBC, NBC News contributor. And Bob Shrum is a Democratic strategist, professor of politics at the University of Southern California. And both gentlemen join me. And I don't know if I can just show what Charlie Sykes tweeted no, not that long ago. Uh, this is Charlie with Debbie Wasserman Schultz yes, with the, the tongue-in-cheek post, Sign of the Apocalypse. Update. Update, yes. Sign of the Apocalypse. Yeah. So anyway, that just happened here at the MSNBC Green Room. Yeah. Uh, but let me get your take on this, Charlie, because to say that the Trump campaign stumbled out of the gate uh, would be an understatement. We got the botched VP rollout. Right, right. No campaigning by the two gentlemen right. together. The awkward 60 Minutes interview yeah. with Leslie Stahl. Kasich bashing, which we've seen. The delegate rebellion of yesterday. Right. Now Melania Trump having to defend that speech from yesterday. How do they recover day two? Well, first of all, you, first of all, acknowledge you made a mistake. I mean, you say that yes, we uh, we made a mistake. We fired these the staffer, and you move on. This being locked into, we will never apologize. We will try to defend. We will try to rationalize. I'm sorry, Chris Christie. This morning was somewhere between cringeworthy and pathetic in all of this. You know, at some point, I understand why people might support Donald Trump, but do you have you know? Can you can't you just hold on to a shred of dignity and not defend the indefensible? And what I'm concerned about is that a lot of Republicans here actually don't understand what a fiasco yesterday was. They are still in denial. They're drinking this orange Kool-Aid. And at some point, you're not going to fix something if you're not going to acknowledge you have a problem. So, Bob, let me ask you about this. In all your years, have you seen ever seen anything uh, like what we're witnessing today or how Charlie's describing things about a fiasco? No, th look, this is amateur hour, uh, not just the vice presidential rollout, but the fact that the first part of the convention program before Melania Trump, there was no effort to reach out to the undecided voters, to independents, to try to persuade them. Uh, and then they bring Melania on to soften uh, Donald Trump's image, and she gives basically a borrowed speech. The defenses of this are incredible. Look, there are phrases like, to be honest, let me say it plainly, I'll never let you down, whatever, that are commonplaces and people use all the time. But that's not what happened here. This was very distinctive language. Someone copied it, and Charlie is exactly right. They ought to just deal with it. They ought to say that a mistake was made. They ought to hold somebody accountable. But they're totally unwilling to do that. And as a result, in the second day of the convention, what are we talking about? We're talking about Melania Trump and plagiarism. And then we're going to have Trump after Trump after Trump give a speech. I suppose they could fill the cabinet. But somehow or other, none of this is coming together in a way that I think will move people toward Trump. Well, meanwhile, when you talk about, Bob, what these conventions are meant to do, it's to highlight these two different parties and to speak to those undecided voters. And we know that Governor Kasich, uh, who is not here and he's not supportive of Donald Trump being the nominee, he talked about unifying, lifting up, showing a, a hopeful night for what it means to be a Republican. Uh, and, and last night, it, it felt dark. He said, death and doomsday. Uh, here's what he told NBC Nightly News anchor Lester Holt in an interview. I've been very clear about it. I mean, the, the, the challenge we have is I'm a person that wants to unite. And uh, I've said that uh, I don't like the divisive language we've heard out of Mr. Trump. And I've held out hope that it would change. It would change. So Donald Trump, meanwhile, he called into a network interview to bash John Kasich, stealing the spotlight from one of the headliners. It's really a reality TV style convention. Uh, but Charlie, do you really think that this is what Trump needs to do to continue with kind of the never surrender approach yeah. to earning people's votes. No, it's exactly what he doesn't need to do. I mean, Governor Scott Walker, uh, you know, said yesterday that one of his pieces of advice to Donald Trump was stop attacking Republicans. So what happens the first night of the convention? Uh, he's actually stepping on his own speakers. And, you know, if if the Melania Trump speech was a screw up, a misdemeanor malpractice, that was felony political malpractice when you think about it. That you have these moving speakers about. Benghazi, and what does he do? It's it, it's it's a it's a twofer. He manages to attack the popular governor of this state, keeps going on that, steps on his own convention speech, and I will say that I'm guessing that that moment probably alarmed a lot of Republican insiders who've been waiting for the grown-up Donald Trump. That probably alarmed them more than the fact that some low-level staffer um, got that speech off Google. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.